50 Michael Jordan Bowls in Chicago, playing inside the worst hangover in sports history. Losing is very tough, and physically. You know, you think you could come in right away and help, and, you know, it was a tough situation. And then, for 1999's top draft pick, for a co-rookie of the year, that situation changed as suddenly as this year's draft. In the draft, come I call, call him Chicago. At 6'8 and 265 pounds, Bram brings a physical low post presence to the Clippers, another team without a winning tradition. But after 31 wins last year, a team with at least some postseason possibility. You know, I was definitely concerned of, you know, the Clippers checkered pass. Um, you know, my agent David Falk, he was really, you know, adamant about it. You know, he didn't really want me to, you know, jump. Live up to one. Still, it's a young group. Proof? It needs leadership from a player who would be a rookie this year himself if he'd stayed at Duke for four years. 22 years old, you know, being an elder statesman already, you know, I have to be a leader. I still have to concentrate on what I... One day, at least for now, he won't have to be cleaning up. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Rinaldi. Los Angeles, first time since being traded to the Grizzlies, and Williams was very involved. How about a pass to Tony Massenberg here for the dunk? The Kings were up late in the game, but the Grizzlies came back. Williams pulls up and nails a long two. They're only down by two now. Two minutes to go. Kings still up two. Mike Bibby misses the jumper. Williams gets the rebound. And check out the behind-the-back dribble and the layup. Williams is pumped. Just over a minute to go, game tied at 92. Williams off the screen, finds Spaniard. Pau Gasol for the lay-in, and the Grizz take the lead. Less than a minute to go now. Grizzlies still up two. Williams off the screen, pump fakes, and then drills the jumper. He had 19 points and 13 assists. The Grizzlies win. They're 2-11 and 11 now on the NBA season. To Orlando, Grant Hill of the Magic facing his former team for the first time. They took on Detroit. Hill gets into the act on transition, gets the dunk at 12 points at the half. The Magic were up by one. Third quarter, Pistons coming back. Corliss Williamson with two of his 17. Fourth quarter, the Magic have a run of their own. Armstrong misses, but Tracy McGrady is there for the follow slam. 24 for him. Hill on the bench with Payne on his left foot. Magic up one. The Pistons take advantage. Three-pointer by Chucky Atkins, and the Pistons go on to win. Who'd won just once since November 3rd, the Cleveland Cavaliers with the opposition, and in the first half, Jordan was just able to nudge ahead. The turnaround jumper. Soft jumper and hits. Coming up here, helping his team to an eight-point halftime lead. Despite sinking 18 points, though, Jordan was only 9 of 24 from the field, and that meant the Wizards' lead was slowly dwindling. And by the fourth quarter, the Cavs were on top. Ricky Davis with the alley-oop slam as the Cavs emerged on top, 94-75. After which, Jordan set his team stinks. Now a look at the rest of the NBA scores. Hockey Bucks try to stuff an impressive home court winning streak. Just ahead. Hockey at home. Third quarter, Sean Marion follows up in a huge way. Suns are on the rise, up by 25, and they would continue to dominate as the minutes wound down. Rodney Rogers at 18 points off the bench as the Suns beat the Bucks for the 14th straight time in Phoenix. We'll send World Sport to break with North Texas. Lipscomb trailed by two after the free throw was made. Why not go for three in the win? Clayton Osborne asked the same question, and look at the answer he got. It was a shot that sent everyone right out of their seats, a beyond half-court beauty for the play of the day. That is where the Hawks said, look out below as the kid with a dust mop in hand nearly gets dusted. His reaction tells the story of, oh no, wrong place, yeah, yeah. wrong time. Saying that's gonna be At least he can tell his friends that he swept away honors for play of the day. Pierce, after that career-high output, and here he is in action as well as Vince Carter. Up, over, and in for a tough two off the glass. Carter looking good. Now the Celtics. Pierce spinning. Didn't have 48 on this day, but the men in green playing awfully well on the road. Inside, they go to Antoine Walker as they begin to pull away late and get an 85-69 win.
here where the Sixers hosted Memphis. The Grizzlies making a game of it. Pau Gasol, Spaniard, great move to the rim. More from Gasol later. Reverend Knight to Gasol. How about the move and then the jump hook? The Grizzlies up by one. Fourth quarter, Sixers down two with under 35 seconds left. Allen Iverson looking to create. And it's Dikembe Mutombo who can't score from close range. Gasol with one of his 10 rebounds. He also had 20 points as the Grizzlies win on the road for the first time this season. The Kings-Mavs game in Sacramento went down to the wire. Controversy here as time is winding down. Peja Stajakovic going for the shot. Dirk Nowitzki blocks the shot. But a foul is called on Nowitzki. Peja hits one of two free throws to send the game into overtime. Extra period. And it was all about Nowitzki. The rebound, the reverse layup there. And then later, that's the jumper. Seven of his 32 points came in overtime. As the Mavs won it by six. Hosting, Boston Carter steals the ball at half court and then goes to work. The behind the back dribble, the drive, and then how about the circus shot? Unbelievable. Carter has his back turned to the rim, but that doesn't really matter, does it? He gets the world sports play of the day but could return later in the week. Jordan hyperextended his knee during a preseason game and has barely been able to practice this season. Jordan last missed an NBA game because of an injury on March 5th, 1993. Glenn Rice met New York for the first time since leaving the Knicks. Houston on the break. They built a huge lead. That's Oscar Torres from Venezuela. He had 11 points. They actually had a 17-point lead. New York getting frustrated. Check out Spreewell here. He's poked by Kenny Thomas. Doesn't like it at all. And check out what he does. Goes to the other end of the court. And then how about the push from behind? The two nearly come to blows before being separated. Latrell Spreewell really asking for trouble. Knicks, though, would come back and make a game out of it. One minute to go in the fourth quarter. Rockets up two. Allen Houston, long jumper is good. He ties it. Still tied at 85, and it's Houston again. Drives and then hits the fadeaway jumper. Great shot. He had 22 as New York. The Cubs clash brought Dallas and the L.A. Lakers together. Shaquille O'Neal, 25 first half points. Dirk Nowitzki, 22 for the Mavericks in the opening half. Dallas led by seven at the break. Tied at 85 late in the game. Michael Finley. He passes over to Finley. Passes to Nowitzki. He hits the three. Dallas had late 88-85. Then O'Neal took over. Watch Kobe Bryant split the defense and find Shaq for the slam. Next time down, O'Neal gets the board and draws the foul and lay in. O'Neal doing it himself. One more time for O'Neal. Watch him take the entry pass, lay it in with ease. Lakers now have the lead. They lead by two late. Nowitzki dribbles the ball off his knee. Watch it again as the ball and the game dribbles away for the Mavericks. As Kobe Bryant and the Lakers put it away. O'Neal, a season-high 46 points as the Lakers come back and win at home. Well, as many tricks as the NBA stars pull. For 75 years, the Harlem Globetrotters have been entertaining fans with their unique mixture of hoops and hijinks. Basketball may be the team's backbone, but their performances are aimed squarely at the funny bone. Yes, that was that cat, all right. That's right, the clown princes of basketball have gotten serious. Forget lopsided wins over the Washington Generals. This fall, the Globetrotters played Big East Power St. John's, the Big Ten's Minnesota, and even top 10 ranked Iowa in Iowa, and they won. And I think what the Globetrotters have changed over the years is that now playing college competition, playing some professional competition versus just the show of spreading goodwill with basketball. You know, now it's a little bit more than that. They, they still spread the goodwill and they have their goodwill tour, but now they also have the tour where they're playing college teams and professional European teams that it's a very serious contest. We're still a lot of fun. I mean, that's what the Hall of Globe Club is about. But we're just trying to show people we still have the basketball ability that we had for years. Remember, we always basketball play before we entertain them. 
The Globetrotters have a history of barnstorming against the best. They beat the defending NBA champion Lakers in back-to-back -back years in the late 1940s. And in the late 1950s, while being the first Western team to play behind the Iron Curtain, they beat the Soviet national team, thanks to a center who would later dominate in the pros. On that particular tour, we had the great Wilt Chamberlain traveling with us. So it really didn't make us any difference who we played. We went and obliged them to a clinic, and we beat them so low they sit on a cigarette paper and let their legs hang down. Now, for at least a few games every season, the Globetrotters are once again adding competition to the comedy. Last year, they even played the then-defending national champion Michigan State Spartans and lost, snapping a 1,270-game Globetrotters winning streak dating back to 1995. Generally, the public assumes that we're great basketball players, and they're always surprised that we'd even take on the lowly NBA teams or college teams. And it only makes news when we lose. They kind of expect us to win, but it is a different format, and uh, it's working well for us. Last year, we played about five college games. Um, this year, we playing nine. Uh, one at the end, make ten. Um, next year, we may get like 15 and hopefully an NBA team in there. And um, I think um, Mr. Jackson wants to have it where we're the best team um, outside the NBA. Uh, and if the NBA wanted to add a new team, we'll be the team to add. That was one reason for us to get back to the format of playing good basketball. We think it's conducive to keeping players on the track that they are enjoying what they're doing and doing something that they love to do. This exhibition season, the Globetrotters went 8-1 and one with a distinctly NBA look to them. Former Bullets and Nuggets head coach Bernie Bickerstaff was on the bench. And two NBA veterans were wearing the team's stars and stripes. Chris Morris, who played for Utah, New Jersey, and Phoenix. And Oliver Miller, who spent time with six NBA teams in eight seasons. And still remains one of basketball's larger-than-life characters. Globetrotters have now gone back to what they do best, being basketball ambassadors and making fans laugh on a 27-game, 26-day tour of Mexico and Central America. But don't be surprised if down the road something strange happens as the Globetrotters take the court. A real basketball game will break out. World-famous Harlem Globetrotters, baby. <laughs>